Good evening, good evening, good evening. Right, so what I'm going to do tonight is continue uh, painting jungle that I was doing last time. Hello Cloak Die Dev, welcome to the stream. Now hopefully my tablet is all up and running. Yes, it looks like it. Now I just want to make sure that that song <clears throat> doesn't repeat. Yep, there we go. Okay. Hello, book past. Exactly where we left off. Yeah, I haven't I haven't touched this since I did the last stream. Um I'm just getting it all set up. Now I did take a look at this last time. Uh and what I want to do is actually um add loads of detail to this log. That's that's something I wanted to do this stream. Uh, get it looking nice and detailed. So I'll start by doing loads of little lines all across here, just like little little scuffs like this. I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, review of Godzilla 1998 that went up yesterday, um, which was quite you know quite a bit of fun to make that one. And uh, yeah, I've just I've just literally finished making another video that should be on the channel by Monday, which I think you guys will like. Hopefully, you'll like it. Um. It's a bit more of an educational thing. <laughs> that log is killing me, says the cloak tie dev. Urgh, that log, it's killing me. Uh, I'm not always around waiting, by the way, says the book pass. Just a, just happened to see you alive again. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I work from home, so I'm constantly on the computer. So the people I follow and who I watch, you know, whenever they go live, I tend to be around for that. So <laughs> don't worry. Uh, I'm, I'm one of you. I might make this a little bit bigger, actually. Okay, three pixels. Just want to sort of roughly add the detail on this thing. Actually, I should probably do this as a new layer, even though I've uh, not done it as a layer so far, but whatever. So, what's your take on it? I was going to watch your other video, but I haven't yet. Of uh, Godzilla '98. Um, I like it. It's a uh, it's a piece of my childhood. So, but um, it's nowhere near my favourite Godzilla film. I like the monster design. I think it's cool. I um, I don't call it Zilla. I call it Godzilla. I think it should have the name Godzilla because it's a uh, it's a different take on the character. And the the character Zilla that you see in like Godzilla Final Wars that fights the Toho version, like that's a different character that's modelled on the uh, ninety eight Godzilla. It's like a joke, but it's a tongue in cheek joke, and a good one at that. But um, no, it's not meant to be the same character. Philippe says something tells me this is a log from Nubla. Um, at the moment, it's it's anything. I haven't actually um, established anything to do with this picture or Jurassic Park. <laughs> I'm just uh, painting this sort of background to then um, uh, add in stuff as I go along, make it up as I go along, essentially. I've got a controversial opinion on it, says the book pass. Still one of my favourite movies. What's your controversial opinion on it then? Do tell. You can't give us that juicy, juicy bit of information and then uh, not tell us. Uh, 
Oh, just that the you it's one of your favourite movies and always fun. That's your controversial opinion. <laughs> You're allowed to have that opinion, man. I think um I've noticed online since the release of the two thousand fourteen Godzilla, like lots of people actually have gone back and watched the ninety eight version and uh some people say that they prefer that over the 2014 Godzilla, mainly because the uh, the 98 version tends to be, well, it has a lot more action in it um, compared to the 2014 one. Now, I did I did record a section for my review that um, where I talked about my opinions on that, but then I decided to remove it because it just took some of the pacing out of the review. Um, and I just thought it, it's not really needed. But if I had to choose, I would pick uh, the 2014 one over the 98 one, if I'm honest. It's much more believable, and uh, and uh, I think it 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 does the sort of similar thing than the um, the, the 98 version, like with the whole have to blow up the the baby monsters at the end. But it does it in a way that's more like what I wanted from the 98 version. Philippe says, I still think a movie that doesn't get enough love or attention is Disney's Dinosaur. Yeah, I mean, it's alright. That's not one of those movies that I'm I'm massively um, a fan, well, I'm not a massive fan of it. Like, even as a kid, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> I preferred The Land Before Time um, out of, like, animated talking dinosaur movies. Um... But what I did love about the uh, the Disney film was the trailer that came out where they had the dinosaurs all just, you know, going about their business and then the egg travels and there's no talking in the whole trailer, it just follows the egg. I remember seeing that at the cinema before um, Tarzan, Disney's Tarzan, and I've said this in the past, uh, even on other live streams and stuff, but I remember watching... Tarzan and thinking only of that trailer. <laughs> I did enjoy Tarzan though. I, 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 it's not that I didn't enjoy it because I was thinking about Disney's dinosaur at the time, but yeah. <laughs> Yo, Emerald Swords, how we doing? The 2014 Godzilla was kind of lame. The amount of monsters was less than Shia LaBeouf's paycheck in 2018, says the cloaked eye dev. <laughs> well, see, the, I think a lot of people give that film grief on the amount of monsters that it shows, mainly because of the title. The title of the film is Godzilla, when it should have been called Mutos vs. Godzilla. Because the, there's lots of monster action in the movie. It's just it's not Godzilla's movie for the most part. It's more the Mutos. And I think that if they'd have called that, um, that you'd have heard lot, a lot less um, complaints because people wouldn't be expecting Godzilla to be the main star, as it were. Even though he was like, like the monster was the star by the end. Um, you know, they could have they could have done something different with that. Emerald Soul says, I'm good. I just watched Jurassic Park 3 yesterday. Nice. I was disappointed with the human characters in 2014's Godzilla, especially the hero. Yeah, see, uh, I didn't mind him. I thought, like, you know, he, he was a good sort of blank canvas for us to go on the um, adventure with. Um, or quite literally, a blank canvas, in a way. <laughs> Because it's more, it's more of like a roller coaster in a sense that, like, you know, Brian Cranston's character says, like, you know, go home, get to your, get to your kids, and look after your family. And then instead of like him uh, getting back to his family with ease, he obviously bumps into the monsters along the way. He never actually saved the day. Well, he he did blow up the nest of Mutos, which were the main threat. And so you gotta give him credit for that. 
He did. Uh, he did stop the annihilation of the human race. <laughs> you know, with Godzilla's help. But that's why they have those like um, moments in the film where, like, he, when he lies down on the boat, you know, you see Godzilla fall down as well. It's almost like they're um, kind of linked in a way. Cretaceous the Haunted says, Hi, having fun painting dinosaurs. Well, I will be when I finally get to do the dinosaurs. I'm, I'm currently on the environment at the moment, but yes, I am having fun. Uh, Shin Godzilla is better. Yes. 100%. Shin, Shin Godzilla is just amazing. Are you getting ready to see Godzilla fight King Ghidorah in the next film, says Cretaceous the Hunted? Of course. Of course. Ah, oh, I really can't wait for that. As a kid growing up, like, I never would have thought all these franchises would be going this strong, like, with this much strength, um, you know, in the future. I always thought that they were just going to, like, fizzle out and not really... Um, not really do much, but they've actually all, all of them, all my favourite franchises are still going and, uh, and and kicking ass for the most part. So yeah, I'm de I'm definitely excited to see Godzilla fight King Ghidorah in in the first American version of those characters. Gonna be good. What dinosaur are you gonna paint? I think last time we um. We all agreed in the chat that I should uh, I should paint something along the lines of like a, a compsognathus or uh, a group of coelophysis running across this log. And I said, what if there was like some sort of um, I don't know dimorphodon or something like swinging in and taking one of them away? Good evening, Chaos Knight. How are we doing? You should paint an Ar Archaeopteryx. Hmm. Yes. Something like that. But I just got to get the uh, get the um, the environment down first because the dinosaurs can look good, but the, if the environment doesn't look as good as the as the dinosaurs, then it's like. You know, you got you got to give them a good home to live in. What are your thoughts on Kong Skull Island? Says uh, Cloaked Eye. Um, I love it. Thought it was really good. I was a bit skeptical at first. I will admit, like I was a bit um, apprehensive of like the uh, the slow motion, <laughs> like when uh, God uh, when Kong throws the. Uh, the boat propeller at the uh, at the skull crawler, but I've watched it many many times since, and it's such a fun movie and and actually ridiculously well made. So, yeah, I mean, some of the human characters, if I was you know to to say one negative, I'd be like you know the, I I would have given Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston's characters a little bit more to chew over. They seem quite wooden and. But I, I think that's kind of the point of the movie in a way, is they're like, it's meant to feel like those old, um, almost like Doug McClure, Land That Time Forgot, um, At The Earth's Core kind of deal. It's like a modern version of that. That's what it really reminds me of anyway, like one of those old sort of old school uh, monster movies. That's a mighty fine tree log. <laughs> What do you think of the Walking with Dinosaurs TV show? Um, I think I have it here. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I actually have it here. I've got the uh, box set that has um, 
Walking with Dinosaurs, obviously. Uh, the Ballad of Big Al. And Land of the Giants. The Giant Claw. So it's like a triple, a triple uh, box set of uh, the BBC's Big Dinosaur. Big Dinosaur Box is what they call it. Yeah, I, I loved it as a kid and I, and I still do today. Obviously some of the facts they, uh, they explain and stuff are, are wrong by now. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's pretty good. You should paint an Archaeopteryx on the branches, Emerald Swords. Yeah, I'll, I'll add some sort of small flying reptile, feathered flying reptile somewhere in this. Jack, have you ever watched Land of the Lost? Um, do you know what? No, I haven't. I, I watched a, quite a bit of it when I was doing my uh, review or like summary of it for Jurassic June a few years ago. Um, for those like small... 30 Days of Dinosaur movie reviews. I didn't watch all of the films because I was doing a review a day and I just didn't have time. Um, but Land of the Lost, I got, I, I've seen more of the old TV show when I was younger um, than I have the new film. Um, it's it's alright. It's something that like, there's so, much, so many dinosaur things out there and so many different, um, you know, pieces of entertainment. <laughs> I only uh, I only really have time to watch as much as uh, as I can, and uh, Land of the Lost is something that um, one it's quite difficult to get a hold of the original TV series. I mean, um, so I just haven't really got round to to exploring that yet. The new film would have to be something I'd have to watch, but I remember the new film being more comedic than I would kind of like a, a like in a way because. Um, there's like that shot where the T-Rex and the Allosaurus like, you know, look at the camera and from clips I've seen. And there's also, um, uh, oh, what bit is it? Like he calls the T-Rex stupid or something and it like turns around and looks at him and you're like, how, how does this dinosaur understand English? <laughs> but yeah. Thank you, Scott. Um, Stivers says, dude, you are quite talented. Respect, man. The comedy in the movie hurt my childhood, honestly. Yeah, no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a comedy. It's just it's not really my cup of tea. Um, you know, like I, I, I appreciate it more for the. Um, I'd have appreciated it more if it was a little bit more serious, and they, uh, you know, did it that way. But you know, I know a lot of people out there really like that film. Um, but yes. So I'm just looking for the spots of light on the um on the log to uh, add bits in. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, no, I'll probably, I'll probably get around to checking out Land of the Lost at some point in the near future. Knowing me, I'll, uh, I'll go back and probably do something of it. But don't expect anything anytime soon. <laughs> I did do a video as I was saying at the start of the stream today, which is uh, dinosaur related. Which, uh, yeah, should be out on Monday. And uh, there's a small chance they might actually be live streaming later tonight as well. Um, 
was thinking I'm, I might uh, live stream more Jurassic Park pinball. Either that or Overwatch, <laughs> which are like my favourite things to play at the moment because we're still waiting on um, Jurassic World Evolution, which uh, isn't out till like June time. So, but I'm actually planning on playing that with Clayton Fioriti. Um, we're doing like planning on working out how to do streams together. So we'll see how that um, how that plays out. We should really have some music on this, shouldn't we? I don't know what um, royalty-free music I could play over this, though. You know? Have something in the background. Okay. Um... I think it's time to add more more little scratches under the bark underneath. Yes, that that was the plan. The uh, white lines are meant to make it look like that um parts of it are lit up because I'm going to add in like uh, beams of light. Dominus Rex 01 says, wow, that looks beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you all. It's nowhere near finished yet, though. You know, I first started drawing uh, dinosaurs and stuff like this back when I was, like, five. Um... I never used to like to trace because I always, even as a kid, I always used to think that like tracing was a little bit too much like cheating. So there was this, um, at my hometown library, there was a, a big book on dinosaurs. Like it was a proper nat natural history uh, book of dinosaurs, huge thing. And inside it had, um, I forget the artist's name, but it had the, the works of this uh, particular famous a paleo artist a lot of his work is actually in the natural history museum and uh what i used to do was i used to put a bit of paper next to the book and well put a bit of paper on on the book and then i'd have the book open next to me and i would um you know pay, try and copy with just my eye like what i'm seeing and and practice makes perfect so that was where i learned as a kid like how to get the shape of the head, how to get interesting dynamic angles, all that sort of stuff. And then um, obviously having Jurassic Park figures everywhere um, really helps because you can like, you know, look at, you know, you can take like this figure for example, and then I'd like look at it from different angles, see how it looks, and then, uh, you know, look at the lighting and the way it works and then apply it to a picture. But um, that just sort of helps with, like, uh, the general look and feel of dinosaurs. And then, you know, over time now, it's like you can... I can just draw them from, like, memory for the most part. I still use, like, looking at the figures and stuff like that to, like, gauge, um, as I said, lighting and see how it uh, bounces off the, the scales and whatnot. But the thing about painting is you're always learning like I'm never I'm never uh, I've never got to a point where I'm like yes I'm 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 all right now I'll stop here I've always like I'm always like trying to push myself to be like oh I wonder I wonder if I could do this I wonder if I could do that and then I'll you know have a go at it because why not what else you got to lose that is a giant Jurassic World logo behind me <laughs> 
There's one I got at the uh, cinema ages ago. And uh, I originally was going to sell it. And then um, the person I was going to sell it to I, it never got back to me. So I was like, oh, well, I'll keep it for a little while longer, I guess. But it uh, will come in handy, like, just to have in the background. Because <laughs> you don't want to see, like, a messy bed or anything. <laughs> Or just have the logo up so you can block the view. Yeah, I used to work at the cinema where I got it, um, Emerald Swords. Book Pass, just finished your 98 Zilla video. Do you still have that behind the scenes books? Looks awesome. Uh, no, I don't. I, I unfortunately sold it. Um, it was just called The Making of Godzilla and it was very similar to like Jodie Duncan's Making of Jurassic Park and The Lost World, like done in that similar sort of style. If I had it, I would have put it in the video. I would have been like, this is, uh, this is my book still. And that Starburst magazine I mentioned at the beginning of the review, I actually did have a copy of that somewhere and I don't think I did, I, I didn't think I had sold it. Like, so I thought it was around here somewhere, but I, couldn't find it so I was like oh, I'll just talk about it in the video I wanted to specifically mention this bit from the magazine where they had this picture of the baby Godzilla's coming through uh, a door with all light behind them a screenshot from the end uh, of Godzilla where the babies are running around Madison Square Garden and uh, the the caption under this picture said um, said look it's jurassic park 3 whoops no it's godzilla and uh and i always just thought that was funny because this was before they'd even announced jurassic park 3 and when i was a kid i remember seeing that caption before i even looked at the picture and was like oh my god jurassic park 3 oh no wait and it actually got me <laughs> as a kid i was like <gasps> and i was like oh no and i wanted to like point that out in the video but um unfortunately i couldn't find it in time Okay, so now what I'm going to do is get really dark colour and then darken a lot of these bits. Since you're clearly a Godzilla fan, do you like Pacific Rim? Yes, I do. And uh, I was actually going to do a short review on that before I see Uprising. Um, if I've got time, I'm very busy at the moment with a lot of different projects. So <laughs> like just getting the Godzilla 98 review out was just something like, I know it's not exactly the 20th anniversary because it's not May. I think Godzilla came out, or Godzilla '98 came out on like May fourth or something, and uh, and I didn't I didn't have that ready in time. Well, no, sorry, I mean I had it ready in time to go, but I wanted to release it early because uh, you know I'm so busy. I was like, I just want to get it out, and the same goes like for Pacific Rim. I want to get my review of Pacific Rim out before I see Uprising, and uh, and yeah, so like I've just got to just got to do it, but it's finding the time. And obviously, like what I'm doing right now is uh, is live streaming because that's what I wanted to do. So, but yes, I love Pacific Rim. I think it's a, a really good fun. And, uh, you know, they out of all alien invasion movies uh, in, you know, that deal with, you know, the characters having to blow up the aliens at the end in order to take out, you know, a portal or however they get into Earth. I think it's my favorite. <laughs> you know, it's very similar to Independence Day in that regard. They, you know, they have to take a bomb to the aliens to destroy them. And so, like, I I prefer um, Pacific Rim to, to Independence Day in that sense. But it's a decent kaiju movie as well. And I think it's a great love letter to, like, old 60s, like, Godzilla movies. Things like Jet Jaguar and stuff. Uh, 
Um, I can't remember the names book past of the making of the Godzilla book, I'm afraid. Yeah, it has the foot, like, from the front. Much like the, um... It has this. So I've got it right here. It has that image on the front. And I do have... Someone in the comments was talking to about this. I do have the series. I have Godzilla the series, the complete... The complete series here. Which I prefer to the 98 movie. Um, but I was going to watch all these before I do anything... Uh, you know, a video on them. But this again, this is the thing. Like I'm constantly doing stuff, so like to 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 set aside time to watch an entire cartoon series is uh, is an undertaking in itself that I I have to do before I make a video on it. And because I'd want to watch it properly and give you guys my thoughts, but it's just again finding the time to do that when I've got so much going on. If you hear me crunching, it's because I'm eating a, um, I've got a pack of aniseed balls. <laughs> so yeah, so if you hear any uh, clattering on my teeth of, uh, of like what sounds like I've, like I've had a tooth fall out or something, it's just because I've got an aniseed ball in my mouth. <laughs> and uh, and I, I don't think it's good etiquette to have food on streams, but I thought an aniseed ball, I could, uh, I could get away with that. <laughs> Dominus Rexo One, oh, I love the series. Yeah, some prehistoric lizards in the background to draw a micro raptor fighting an Archaeopteryx. Well, I was thinking of doing like something. Like you've got small dinosaurs or like on this log and then in the background you've got like a big dinosaur doing something. Um But we'll see we'll see how we go. Like um as I said, like I'm I'm concentrating more on the uh the actual image of the the background and the environment, sorry. The image I'm working on at the moment than thinking about the dinosaurs for the moment, but your suggestions are most welcome. Hmm. Tyrannosaur Friday. Velociraptor is back on a different profile. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Get ready for some jokes. Some really naff ones. Or some really life-altering questions that make you wonder, why am I listening to Velociraptor? <laughs> I'm kidding, man. Too bad the Jurassic Park show got cancelled, says Indominus Rex 01. Uh, which one? Do you mean the uh, the original cartoon series from 1993? Or do you mean the Chaos Effect uh, cartoon series that was going to come out after The Lost World? Because if you're, if you're talking about those two cartoon shows, then I might have uh, something up your alley that might fill that void. Which, again, is another project I'm working on uh, on the side. Which uh, is called Dino Defenders. Which this, like, if I paint this in the right way, we might be able to use this this frame in that cartoon series at some point. <laughs> Why did Ar Archaeopteryx eat worms? Is it because he was the early bird? That is terrible. Velociraptor, absolutely dreadful. <laughs> I 
Okay, sort of add some uh, vines and other moss and stuff growing all over this. Get it looking all good. Wait, there was more than one I was on about chaos effect. Yeah, there was a TV show. Hello? You can, okay, one second. Let me just mute my mic. <laughs> They've said pizza's ready, and uh, and this man, this man here, he's not ready, not ready for pizza just yet. I'll have that once I finish streaming. Um, but yeah, no, as I was saying, um, there was a there was an original uh, cartoon series that was going to come out for the first film. It was going to be like a sequel to uh, to the original Jurassic Park, not just one for Chaos Effect. Get it all looking very detailed. Pizza sounds good, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm excited for pizza. That's uh, it's just I wanted to do live streaming before I eat it. Um, and cold pizza is not that bad, if I'm honest. Nothing wrong with a bit of cold pizza. <laughs> There we go. It's looking a little bit better now with the uh, with well, this section is with more detail being added on. See you later, uh, Tyrannosaur Friday. Making you live stream in like four hours. Well, I I might be streaming later tonight, so, uh, but that'll be probably for a video game more than painting. Um, potentially, can't promise anything. I don't know how I'll feel in four hours. <laughs> what are you using to paint with? Uh, Photoshop. But I'm using a. If you're asking what I'm using with my hands, I'm using a tablet. This big old tablet here. Yeah, Ooh. and painting on this. Yeah, drawing tablet, that's what I'm using. Um, it's my new one. Uh, I got it for Christmas. My loving wife got it for me. And uh, it's a Huion, it's a, uh, a wireless one. See the detail there? What game are you going to play, says Emerald Swords. I was saying this earlier in the stream, I was thinking of either playing uh, the Jurassic World pinball game, again. Try and beat my high score. Or I was going to play more Overwatch. Because all I'm doing is waiting really for... Uh, <laughs> for Jurassic World Evolution. Or maybe I'll pick something new on Steam and try and... Uh, play something different. I kind of like the idea of like a like a strategy game. Like I'd love to play Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. That would be the thing I'd love to play, but um unfortunately I couldn't get it to work. Um I have got it on my 
PC, but I, I never got it to work. Uh, no, not Wancom. It's a Huion, Huion as they as they call it. Uh, my tablet. <clears throat> I should have had a Kano in the background. Hmm. Kano is a good shout. Carnosaurus, Can Carnotaurus, or a Spinosaurus. just trying to get this look like so by adding all like the moss all over I'm just trying to get it to look like it's been you know lying down for a very long time You have pet dinosaurs in Ark Survival Evolved. Yeah, I mean, I would I would stream that if I had like eight hours to stream. <laughs> like, or if I wanted to stream for like eight hours, because that game is just, uh, you know, you have to commit a lot of time to it. And I personally don't, I don't know if I have the patience for Ark. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I could play it and then, uh, you know, maybe I'd like it. Then I'd get like sucked down the rabbit hole and you'd never see me again. Trapped in Ark forever. Yeah, I'm, think I'm thinking something along the lines of like a strategy game. Maybe I'll get like um Oh what's that what's that space game where you build like spaceships and uh Oh god what's that called? There's ones where like you build them out of blocks and then uh you know battle them online with other people. Or I could play more Friday the thirteenth, that's a that's a good idea. Haven't played that in a while. Just, it's really fun taming dinosaurs and fighting against them. Kerbal, thank you, Evo the Nerd. Kerbal Space Program, yes. That's the one I'm thinking of. Maybe I could get that. Because that's always uh, good fun. A roller Coaster Tycoon 2 is that's that's the one that's the one I've I really want to stream. <laughs> um oop. Hmm, okay. Getting there, we're getting there. You can see the difference. The problem is this log, if I, if I just use the mouse for a second, I can uh, crudely cut this out. Let me, um, because the log looks quite flat against the background, so if I just roughly cut it out, like so. Just like this, very professional. <laughs> 
and like that, and then copy that into a new layer. Oh no, I don't want to cut it. There we go. So I've got that into a new layer now. So then I can uh, one add a shadow. Uh, help it stay against the uh, the backdrop. Uh, let's have a look. Like that, and then if I add a inner shadow, get it to look a little bit more log like. Here we go. So add your be bevel and emboss. So I will check out the chat in a second. Just gonna just having a look at see at this. See what n nice little effects we can do on the lock. There we go, and a gradient overlay. So, uh, yeah, let's get a nice little purple effect in there. Okay, now we convert that to a smart object. And then change the opacity so blend it. Mm. Yes, that looks pretty darn good. Okay, so now I'm just going to continue on with the handing on of the vines. How about you play the aisle? Mmm, is, is that the one where you're running around as dinosaurs and like there's people online that you can uh, like you're like living alongside? Is, is that is that the one? Yeah, the online multiplayer one Emerald Swords. Okay, mmm, yeah, I'll see. I'll see what how much that's going for and then see if that's something I want to uh, live stream. That's a good idea though, that's a good shout. That's uh When's the last time you saved? Yes, good point. Let me uh save this. Good shout out. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh man, the amount of times I've done that before in the past where I'm just like in the middle of painting something and it's and I've been doing it for absolutely ages and then the computer crashes or something and I just lose all my work. Like the amount of times that's happened has, has been crazy. And with this computer there is a there's a high chance that that could happen because this computer has a uh, has a habit of uh restarting for no reason <laughs> it only does it once as well like per day it'll do it it'll just be like nope i'm restarting so like if it did it like now then yeah i would have lost everything so it's a good shout so it's more than likely in the future you guys might be watching me paint on a live stream and then it might do that
What if you draw a young T-Rex behind the log eating at something like the T-Rex from Jurassic Park 3? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm liking the idea of the um, micro raptor. You mentioned a micro raptor earlier. I said in, I remember in my previous stream when I started painting this, I, excuse me, I've got an itch in my nose. Um, I like the idea of having scale between a small dinosaur and a big dinosaur. Oh god, yeah. Yeah, that sort of stuff happens all the time. I might actually uh, put the size to four and then add some more vines on, but make them just darker than the other one. Will this painting be available for purchase upon completion? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I could arrange something if uh, if someone wanted to buy it. Yeah, sure. I would uh, gladly sell it. I mean, you can witness, literally witness the creation of it, <laughs> and then, uh, and then you can deem it uh, something of worth if you want. You're my Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just get a bit of a titanium white. Look at this little guy. Look at this little fella. Isn't he cute? Isn't he just enamored with my painting? <laughs> Instead of a squirrel, I have like a little uh, a little T-Rex. I'm like, look at this little guy. Look at him. Isn't he so great? <laughs> Isn't it just a wonderful wonder, <laughs> wonder of life in my hands? <laughs> Let me get to this bit of swamp green and, and have it clash against the sunshine yellow. That well, that's what the music at the start of this live stream is meant to be emulating. Um, when I sent my friend Drew a request, I was like, I want to do live stream painting, and uh, I, need, I need sort of an opening theme. I said, Is there any chance you could do something that sounds a little bit Bob Ross esque? And so he created the music that you hear at the beginning and the end of the live stream. That sounds like something you would hear in a in a episode of Bob Ross. <laughs> Beautiful American accent. I'm not the best at American accents. Do a bit of uh, I, I don't I don't know what regions a lot of them are like because obviously in the UK you can walk five minutes down the road and the accent changes so. And uh, my knowledge of geography of America is 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 not as good as it uh, as it probably could be. So if I was to do like an accent like this and just try and work out where it's from, I don't really know. <laughs> it's from Idaho, did. Okay, so the log is looking more and more 
finished. I might just take this color, darken it a tad, and then do more of these vines hanging down. The Californian accent. Yeah, I can't really do that. I, don't, I wouldn't know where to begin. Okay, so there we go. That is looking much better. So far. If LA was in the UK, the people would sound completely different at either end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. The accent in the county I'm in at the moment is uh, is so funny. They talk a little bit like this. Hello there. Welcome to Norfolk. Welcome to the east of England. Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> ferns in the background have noticeable outlines around them. Yeah, no, I, I'll get to these ferns in a minute. Yo, Clayton, welcome. Currently editing today's video. Been listening since the start, lol. <laughs> you sneaky bugger. I was about to say, it's, uh, where is Clayton this evening? He's here all along. I don't know if you guys uh, have uh, ventured so far to watch the video I uploaded called The Soul Collector with uh, my, me and my friend doing a commentary over it. Um, I'd say if you're like a, a fan of Jurassic Park or Jurassic World or whatever, or Lost World, sorry, should I say, uh, you should definitely, definitely check out the last like uh, seven or eight minutes of that film. Hello, British Tyrannosaur. Just got back from the vets with my dog. Oh no, is 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 your dog okay? I hope your dog's okay, man. I saw the Soul Collector video you did. Yeah, um, so what did you think to the uh, <laughs> the giant white monster at the end of it that looks like, you know, someone had taken the Indominus Rex and run it over with a steamroller and then tried to uncrumple it? <laughs> she had a big operation. She's better than what she was, but very sleepy. Oh, bless. What kind of dog is it? What kind of dog are we talking here? Mm-hmm, that is looking very good. Right, let me save this. Watch the Soul Collector and loved it. Reminds me of being a kid. Loved the tribute to the Hunter ambush. That was my favorite part. Dude, that, that wasn't a tribute. We just literally stole the scene out of the movie. We like have, like even the lines of dialogue, my friend Ross pulls out and he goes, map, and he pulls it out and he's like, ah, the, the gates to hell are right down here, the base of these cliffs. And I'm like, how do you know? And he's like, cause I've seen it. And it's like, it's like exactly the same. <laughs> When we were recording that commentary, we hadn't seen that film in years. Why we were laughing our heads off at the beginning. We were really excited about it.
Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is this stupid? I've got many, many films like that. Me and my friends have recorded. There's, there's, uh, there's a lot. We used to make films every single day. Okay, so now I've done the detail on that log for the most part. Let me, uh, let me concentrate on the background. Um. Let's start up here, actually, because this looks this looks really basic. Feeling like more of like a yellowy. Uh... Get these ferns down. I enjoyed watching your um, Jurassic Park the game video today, Clayton. I know I, I commented under it saying I'm really excited for the next part. That's because, you know, I know what's coming, um, and I want to. And I'm really excited to hear your thoughts on it. But um, yeah, I did enjoy. I did enjoy the uh, the part today. So what is it like? A hundred days now till Fallen Kingdom comes out. Who's seen that uh, video of Jeff Goldblum announcing it? Isn't he just like, <laughs> isn't he just the best? Okay, so now we've got this really bright plant. And we will go down one side. We had a lot of stuff removed, just sleeping now. Okay. Well, give, your, give your dog a hug from me, man. 99 days. Oh, yeah. Shit. Lots can happen in those 99 days, I'll tell you that. Have you ever watched the Indiana Jones films, says Emerald Swords. What kind of question is that? <laughs> I mean, because since I've moved into my new room, I, I've got everything at my fingertips. Have I seen the Indiana Jones films? Yes, and I've even got the fourth one here. You know, I, I, for, for the grief that um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull gets, it was nice when they released it that the, the packaging matched... The uh, this box set, so obviously aside from the green, but they uh, they got it to all like, you know, have it all laid out, um, the same, which I thought was courteous of them. <laughs> Hello, never not so clever at this. You never talked about it. Um, I, I've got there's a there's a uh, commentary for the. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull I did with Brad Jost of the Jurassic Park podcast a while back um, on my channel. We watched it in black and white and uh, I'll warn you, we, we praise the film a lot, um, which, you know, I, 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 we like it for what it is, even though it's nowhere near as good as the other ones. Um, and there's a lot of things that I would change in it still, but um, for the most part, we tried to give it a more of a more of a balance uh, balanced opinion rather than just being like oh instead of flat out just saying oh this is shit <laughs> which you know there was many instances where I did want to say that but um, yeah there's there's still a lot to like with that film despite uh, a lot of stuff that I don't like uh... <laughs> Mm 
<laughs> Have you seen the PBS video exploring Jurassic Park as a condemnation of unregulated capitalism? Says never not so clever at this. No, but I would like to. Uh, I'd like to have a link to that if you if you've got it. That sounds interesting. I mean, that is what the film. That is what the film is essentially. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, meta digs towards uh, capitalism in in the Jurassic Park franchise since the first one. It's almost a staple at this point, but obviously. Jurassic Park is almost, you know, it's a it's a product of capitalism, so it's uh yeah. It's like a warning of like you can have fun with this, but like don't don't try and overdo it because you'll uh, you'll create something like the Indominus Rex and then it'll all go it'll all go wrong. Yeah, Jurassic Park is communist propaganda confirmed. <laughs> oh, YouTube won't let me link it here. Okay, just, just send it to me on Twitter or something. Um, if you, if you fancy it, I'll definitely definitely check that out. Okay, so that is, like, better than that. Um, actually, I'm thinking what I might do is, if I can, make this a new layer. So then that way, I can... Uh, change that to log everybody wants log log <laughs> oh thank you very much emerald swords getting better it's getting better but the thing is i'm going to change the color of the entire background um to give it depth Because um, at the moment the depth of field isn't isn't as good as I'd like. Clayton says I have a video planned on the themes Crichton brought to the story. Rereading the novel as an adult opens the door on a lot of ideas. It's very anti-science to some degree, very dark and very critical. Hmm. Oh. It's like a, um, it's like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's like his version of that. That's the way I've always looked at it. Which um, I wanted to do a a video on Frankenstein and its relationship to Jurassic Park and its relationship to Alien as well. Um, because the Jurassic Park and the Alien franchise have a lot more in common than, uh. A lot of people think fans like myself who who are fans of both franchises i've heard a lot of people who who are of the same sort of uh mindset as myself actually make that comparison before um but i wanted to actually make a video it like that goes more in depth with that actually yeah it's the classic tale of hubris 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 gone awry British Tyrannosaurus says one day I'm going to find how to fit all the Crichton books into one universe. 
Well, isn't it in the book Next by Michael Crichton, there's that company called Biogen, which is like InGen and Biosyn mixed. I really do find painting environments to be like really satisfying. With um Dino Defenders, I'm like painting this like white corridor at the moment and just getting all the details in that it's just really fun. There's like a there's like a big tropical fish tank as well and I'm like designing all the fish and doing all the coral and stuff and it's like really uh really satisfying to do. Much like this. Uh, what were we saying? Emerald Swords. I made a home card game like Pokemon where the creatures fight against each other. Alien, Jurassic Park, dinosaurs, Godzilla, monsters, and more. <laughs> Books like Sphere are similar to Jurassic Park in lots of ways, so you could do it. Yeah, I mean, I I said in my review on this channel of Sphere, the the film, um, that that film feels like someone took Alien and Jurassic Park and uh, merged them. <laughs> um. Okay. I think there's another Michael Crichton book that's linked to Jurassic Park, but I forget which one it is. There's one where I think another company's mentioned, but I can't can't remember which one it is. I'm thinking, is it like Disclosure or Rising Sun, where they mention something? Has anyone been able to find a quality picture of the ship from Sphere where it is clear and you can make it out completely, says Michael Acosta. No, um, I think, I don't even know if they built a whole ship from Sphere. I think they might have just built like the tail fin sticking up out of the coral reef. Um, let's just uh, add these leaves on. Um, never not so clever at this says what is interesting is how the first book Crichton shows little love for the engineers as part of the corporate machine whereas in the lost world engineers practically save the day <laughs> the little guy 
One of the five deaths is mentioned in Latitudes. That's it, yes. That was the one I'm thinking of. The uh, the pirate book. Do you know I still haven't got round to... Still haven't gotten around to reading Dragon Teeth yet. I really should. I mean, I don't even own it yet, so... I should probably... Probably get on that. This needs to be smaller. Get these leaves looking nice and bright, like they're being lit up by sunlight coming through. Um, okay, looking better, looking better. Uh, what else are you guys saying? Imagine if the Congo movie existed in the Jurassic Park film universe. Laser monkeys to death just happened while <laughs> alongside the cloning of dinosaurs. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, you can do that if you want, Evo the Nerd. I, I wouldn't mind taking a look at your, your Nublar map. Why not? Clayton says, I've also bought, um, I bought Dragon Teeth, but have yet to read it. Mm, yeah, I, I really need to get on that. A lot of Crichton films got announced, but haven't seen anything of them yet. Prey was announced like three years ago. Hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed Prey. Um, Micro is the one I'm looking out for the most, because Micro, I thought, was uh, one of his best. Um, what's your Twitter? It's Jack, or at Jack underscore Ewans. Um, okay, right, what I'm going to do now is build up the bushes. Actually, I'm going to do this as a new layer. And what I'm going to do also is uh, put this at three, three pixels. Put this up to 100. Or 93, that'll do. No, actually 100. And then I'm going to uh, drop shadow, because then that way I can see it. Like that, exactly like that. And then it's up to four. Um, uh, here you go. I'll write. I'll write my Twitter on here for you. There you go. There you go, dude. That's my Twitter. So I put the shadow under this, not not because I'm going to keep it like that, but just so I can see more of what I'm doing. Thanks, man. I'll uh, I'll check that out in a second once I've uh, edited some of this, edited some more bushes. I think in a minute, once I've done the bushes, I'll start on the first dinosaur. Um, and then 
I'll probably end the stream to go have some pizza. Probably watch a few episodes of Star Trek Next Generation. Or watch watch Annihilation is on my list. I might watch that. Um, if yeah, and then uh, and then I'll potentially come back British time, probably around midnight, to live stream a video game for a, for a couple of hours. Have you decided on the dinosaur yet? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking of like maybe. Uh, a Microraptor versus a Celiophysis with an Archaeopteryx in the background clinging onto a tree, very, like a small Archaeopteryx, and uh, and then a large dinosaur, which I haven't uh, worked out yet what I want to put on there, but maybe a large dinosaur standing in the background. That's what I've got planned. Uh, Annihilation is awesome, says Clayton Fioriti. See, I've heard mixed things. I've heard some people say it's absolutely brilliant, and then I've heard other people say that it's uh, it's nothing special. Whereas, obviously, when I hear that, I'm like, I'll just judge it when I see it. Um, the difficult thing is, like, when you're when you're someone who is of creative, like, you know, you've got that creative streak. I find it very difficult to. As I've gotten older, I've found it more and more difficult to critique other people's work because, like, to get something like that done, it's like there's so much work goes into it and stuff that even if the final product isn't uh, amazing, like appreciating the craft is uh, is what it's, you know what it really boils down to. So I'll judge it for myself, even though like the people I've talked to who didn't really like it were like, no, 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 it's uh, not as good as everyone says. <laughs> Matt Phillips says, Annihilation is trippy. Ugh. Is it the kind of film you need to watch when you're, you know, relaxing? <laughs> wink, wink, you know what I mean? <laughs> Is it that kind of movie, or is it, uh... <laughs> or is it one to watch sober so you don't freak out? <laughs> Annihilation does that for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um okay, so that is looking like this and then um let me just try and fill in some of those gaps a little bit more. And then I kind of want to do the same down here. You can see where like I roughly drew in some stuff where I want to like do that. So, oh, I need to change the color. It needs to be darker. There we go. If you happen to hear more singing in the background while I'm streaming, it's my uh, my wife is practicing with her bandmate because they've got a gig on Saturday, and, uh, and they're practicing some songs. I don't think the mic will pick them up, but if they do, that's where you're going to hear some lovely singing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
The brush stroke you're using is too clunky. Oh no, that's because I'm not done. I'm not done with this. Like, it's clunky because I've got a shadow on it. That's just so I can see what I'm doing against the uh, the rest of the background. There is method to my madness, believe me. Um, okay, now what I'm going to do is up the brightness, and then and maybe a little bit more, and then I'm going to make the brush smaller to two, and then do the background. Oh, no, not that one. Over here. So if any of you guys downloaded Pokemon, <laughs> I meant uh, <laughs> Jurassic World Alive, not Pokemon Go. I was going to say downloaded the Pokemon Go uh, app, but I meant to say <laughs> Jurassic World uh, Alive. I haven't because I've been busy, um, but I've seen loads of people on Twitter have, uh, have been downloading it and playing it. I didn't know if any of you guys in the chat have been... Uh, experiencing that yet I saw someone post a screenshot of like a spinosaurus that they saw and uh, and it's really cool because it like looks like the one from Jurassic Park 3 and uh, yeah I thought that was really neat that they actually stuck with that design is Jurassic World is Jurassic Alive out well I've seen I think it had like a a, 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 co a stealth launch as they call it last night and I know it did in Canada I don't know about the UK or America. One of the reasons I was asking, actually. I'm just trying to find out. Uh. Never not so clever at this. Says, How do you think a Jurassic World would manifest if Crichton was still around? Would there still be the Indominus? A novel, even? Hmm. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Do you mean like would he have approved of the Indominus, or would he, or would he have written a third book? Like I don't, I don't quite understand what you're coming, what your question means. Sorry, dude. I don't know. Oh, it seems to be Canada only that it's launched. Okay. Okie dokie, right, that is looking pretty swish. Okay, now with this layer, this one here, I'm going to take the take the shadow and, uh, and get something like this. And then a gradient overlay. blue on it hmm. okay 
Okay, let's do let's make our first dinosaur and then we can start to um oh actually wait before I get into that let me add a couple more uh vines. So what I'm gonna do is do quite big ones like whoop like that and then one like this and then Wow, why can't I get that to go straight? There we go. And now, I'll uh, use a darker color and a smaller brush and go over it with, oh no, not 124. I read someone's attempt to make Jurassic Park 3 into a Crichton novel. It was decent attempt. Used older script ideas as well, says British Tyrannosaur. Cool, that's a neat idea. Um, yeah, do you think Michael Crichton would approve slash disapprove of where the franchise is now? I genuinely believe that he would... Uh, I think he would be quite happy with what's, you know, what, what's happened with Jurassic. Um... Because most of the, most of the ideas <laughs> that are you know being used come from from the first book. So it's not like he's uh, his work is being m completely left out. It's uh, if anything, it's being used more so. Um, but like <laughs> something we were discussing when writing the content for. The viral website, or website, should I say, with the whole uh, um, backdoor and stuff. Like <laughs> we kept saying, like one does not simply walk into Michael Crichton's universe. <laughs> so you had to make sure we had to make sure that we were respecting the work as well as adding to it and uh, making sure that it all you know fit together and made sense just got here what did I miss as small farms well I can show you so from the beginning of the stream this is what the picture this is what the picture looked like at the beginning of the stream and you have missed the creation of uh, this so they all that I'm now just editing the vines at the top Crichton wanted directors to have their own vision. He literally said, do what you want with the Lost World. Yeah, exactly. I think as long as the message hasn't been tarnished, I always thought Crichton was game for like anything. He had a uh, very... On one hand, he had a very serious adult look on the world um, when it came to like these fantastical stories. But then on the other, set, on the other hand, he... He completely understood the spectacle and the uh, and the marvel of seeing, uh, you know, great action set pieces and stuff. And he wasn't, you know, he wasn't uh, any different in a lot of his books. Really, he uh, there was a lot of uh, stuff in his books that, you know, you see in films like Jurassic World and stuff. So. Uh... Brighton would have loved Jurassic World, says Clayton. I've heard some very odd hipster-style pundits on YouTube nerd shows say Crichton's rolling in his grave. I seriously doubt that they understand what they've on what they're honestly saying. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of critiques out there that I have heard and listened to, and even made rebuttals for, and then took <laughs> took the rebuttals down because I was like, no, I don't want to pander to their 
their to what I think is their you know idiotic approach to you know the Jurassic franchise. Like that Bloomin' Screen Rant article that ran the other day about calling out for the end of the Jurassic franchise, saying it should end. And it's like, you know, no no disrespect to the to the, the person who wrote the article, but you know, if if you did check out who wrote that article, they definitely haven't watched like The Lost World or Jurassic Park Three. And if they have, it was many years ago with their kids. And they and like they they're like, oh, calling out for the death of the franchise. Like, you, you're not a fan. You've just, you've just been hired to write this clickbait article. As long as the title says this, then you know you'll get your check in the post. And it's like, it's such a, a sort of a lazy approach to to writing about movies. It's just because like no one has a decent idea on what to write about. It's like, yeah. So like, I, I condemn that wholly. Yeah, British Tyrannosaur says Mike Hill. The uh, Mike Hill's a, a decent guy, like a decent critic in some sense. He's got a very keen eye for some details, but then uh, when it comes to Jurassic, he's got such a bias against Jurassic World that it, it sort of blocks his view from uh, uh, you know seeing the picture as it probably should be looked at. Like for example, like when he says Claire is like. In control of the uh you know the com command room or whatever he says in one of his videos and he says like she literally calls off the the hunt uh calls off i wish he, he basically blames her for the for the um for the very thing masrani uh masrani stops the evacuation that's it and she he blames it on claire and it's like if you watch the film man you'll see that it's uh You'll see that it's Claire, uh, it's Masrani that does it, not Claire. So, but what can you do? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, is draw the first dinosaur, um, and then we'll get back to the environment uh, next time. So let me merge that with the background. Merge. Oh no, not all of it. Not all of it. No. No. Come on! Don't do this. Okay, so I want to blur that. Yeah, merge. Okay, so then this, I can change the colour. Um, that Screen Rain article made me very angry, says British Transport. Why should JP end while others drag on? I know, it was it just, you, you just can't take it seriously because it wasn't written seriously. You look how much this changes the mood now. I like have control of the colour of the background. And then I'm going to add a gradient overlay. Master Builder says, wait, are you talking about Screen Rant's controversy? Yeah. <laughs> You'd love to rip them apart. Okay, so there you go. We've got, uh, let's convert that to a smart object. And then change the brightness. Uh, no, 
let's keep that the same. Um, wow, that looks awesome. Thank you very much, Emerald Swords. Uh, not done yet. I'm thinking actually it'd probably be probably be wise to copy copy this layer. Then uh oh wait, why why is that? I see we've got a gap on the side. Like that. Apply. Now add the uh, gradient overlay. Trying to get the light to match the log is what I'm trying to do. There we go. Um, and then paste. Oh no, I only got that. <laughs> okay, let me let me undo. Undo. I wanted to copy this entire le like layer. There you go. All right, now let's do it. Uh, gradient overlay. Yeah, there we go. And now we can adjust that accordingly. But we also need this layer for when we add in the dinosaur. So okay, I'm going to add in uh, the first dinosaur right now. So let me uh, just see what you guys are saying. Clayton says, who is Mike Hill? Just don't worry, man. It'll make your blood boil. Uh, <laughs> everyone's just digging on screen rant. What's the dino of today? This is fantastically calming. Thank you for streaming this, says Scott Stivers. Hey, no worries, man. It's a little bit different to, to video gaming, isn't it? <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, do you think big dinosaur first or little dinosaur first? What do you think, what do you think I should do first, guys? Practice makes perfect small farms. Like, like a lot of this drawing is just slapping colours on top of each other. Do a little dinosaur. Um, so I was going to do a micro raptor or a um, coelophysis because I've got the um, the original Jurassic Park coelophysis right here. I could do something like this. A little dinosaur first. Okay. Shall I do the micro raptor first? Because I think it was um, who suggested the micro raptor? Was it you, Emerald Swords? I'm just going back in the chat just to see who said the micro raptor. Yes, it was Emerald Sword says you should draw a micro raptor fighting an Archaeopteryx. Um, Coelophysis, please. Emerald Sword says whatever you want. Coelophysis, Master Builder. Oh, oh, well, okay. Well, we've got two votes for Coelophysis, so let's do that then. Um, let me save first. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, okay, so let me layer up. Now, what I like to do is uh, log... Uh, Vines, blue mist, background, and then I'll call this one just C for coelophysis. Can't be bothered to spell it all out now. So, what I might do is have the coelophysis roaring at the micro raptor they're going to be fighting on this log okay so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to have the coelophysis and that fighting on top of this log they're like in a duel in a duel amongst each other and then behind them is going to be a large predator that's like almost camouflaged into the background or like it's just hiding staring right at them so like you've got this battle of these little tiny dinosaurs but they have no idea that they're like 
about to be eaten themselves. <laughs> Although, one could argue they should probably be able to smell the dinosaur, so maybe I won't do that, but... I'll, uh, yeah, I'll start with the coelophysis. So let me, um, what I like to do is, like, look at the figures. Um, see, a lot of people, when they... You know they have the the figures and stuff they'll they'll put them on the um you know put them on their shelves and stuff just for just for uh, as almost like ornaments but as someone who paints i can't help but use them now for like things like this and uh, and i highly recommend for people who want to learn how to draw um you know who said that again uh small farms like if you want to learn to draw like look at any old action figure and stuff and then you can get the contours and stuff right from there but like i'm actually like picturing it on the log like where i'm seeing it it's like perfectly lined up with the log so like i could draw like this is gonna be very basic by the way oh actually let's uh draw it like So we want uh, its head up like this, and then uh, I was thinking of having it like climbing over this log, so you like you got its leg. I'll make its feet smaller so it's like chicken sized feet. But, um... So it's like it's falling off the log or something. And then have its tail like I don't know. So what do you think? Something like along the lines of that, like it's crawling all over the log? It looks like a terror bird so far. <laughs> I sometimes use the figures and sometimes use pictures for references. Yeah. I mean, it's good because, like, the... Pick, like, like using the figures, you, like I said, you can get all different angles instantly. Whereas, like, looking at pictures also helps, but, um, you know, it, they're, they're only from one angle. I didn't realize the log was so close. Yeah, I mean, I, I drew it really big. Maybe I need to, like, make it smaller. Maybe it needs to be, like, this and then... Maybe there's a couple of coelophyses. Maybe this isn't just one. So maybe this goes down here like this, and then... Hey, I made you smaller. Why did you get get bigger? Apply. There we go. Maybe, maybe it's tiny, like down here. Let's see about this. Um, for God's sake, why isn't that working? Oh, log. See, there we go. See, that's why it's not working. And then maybe I need to like arch its arm up more. I mean, maybe it's forearm. I'll move that rather than being.
maybe its arm will be like down like this. And then its head, I'll move up like that. So maybe the first seal of physis should be uh, climbing over the log like this. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's a good size. Why not a pack of sealer faces? Yeah, I think I'm thinking I'm like making more than one of this. Okay. Well, let me uh, now start a new layer and then we'll get this guy's colors down. So let's see how quick we can get this. Uh, uh, my like sealer face is done. Um, I'm thinking of doing it sort of in similar colors to um, the Herrerasaurus from Jurassic Park. So sort of oranges and reds, or like um, like this raptor here, but more red. Thinking of doing like colors like this for these sealer faces. But we finally got to uh, draw on a dinosaur, at least, in the stream. <laughs> you know. So we do it like this. Let's get the block color down first. All right, we'll look at the chat in a minute. I'm just uh, just getting this down. Okay, now I take the top layer and turn that into like Uh, that sort of color. Maybe I'll go yeah I'll keep it like that um, and then use the finger tool to smooth out all these lines and get them all looking swish. Uh, what were you guys saying? Jack, what kind of other creatures are you putting in Dino Defenders? Oh, well, that is something I can't reveal yet. <laughs> but it's uh, it's good of you to ask that question because uh, yeah, dinosaurs might not be the only thing in the in the story. You know what the big you know what the animal should be in the background of this picture? It should be one of the old school like iguanodons where they had the horn on the nose. Like one of the really old school dinosaurs. Like what if it was like a, this Coelophysis uh, was fighting like a feathered Microraptor and it was really, um, you know, up to up to speed with modern paleontology. But then like in the background is this like lumbering old standing upright T-Rex or something. A T-Rex with three fingers. <laughs> you have like the old and the new. See, I think I need to do this foot again. Um, the foot needs to be like that, in a way. So I just rub that out and go straight into... And then I have another toe claw like this, and then... And now it's looking too much like a frog. Is that 
damn Dr. Wu and his frog DNA. Yeah, I'll just put it like that for now. Um, and then... Uh, making a right on mess of this. Uh, No, oh, we'll work that out in a bit. I'll just get the tail nice and neat. Okay, now what I'm going to do is actually merge those two layers. Um, and then duplicate it. And then on the top layer, I will change the color to a red. Yeah, like this. And then use the rubber to rub out the inside of the mouth, the eye, and then the underside of the dinosaur so we can get the, like the angle this dinosaur is facing. Just like that. And then again, uh, copy the bottom layer and duplicate that. Um, and then uh, which one's that? Yeah, put it on above. That's it. And then rub out that top layer, but then keep some just do it in like a all mishmash of different positions and things like that it back up to speed and then turn this layer into a different color maybe orange I can find orange where is that where are you orange there we go oh bit too bright Okay, so it looks very like <laughs> splattered at the moment, but that is the aim at the moment. And now we'll go in and add in some detail. Uh, what are you saying? T-Rex, but there's a lizard in a costume. <laughs> yeah, for the old school one. Oh, the, the yeah, British Tyrannosaur, the new clip from Fallen Kingdom that Michael uh, Michael Giacchino shared it was so good so good if they do a large scale dinosaur movie says small farms with a budget of like 200 million dollars where all the dinosaurs are done with practical effects stop motion suited actors and animatronics etc that would be an interesting experiment, but I'm with British Tyrannosaur. People would start complaining. <laughs> you know, they, they, they don't like... C like, a lot of people don't like CGI for the most part. They will complain about CGI, but if, if they had a movie like that was all practical, you'd get everyone else saying, like, well, they don't look very real and that kind of thing. I'm just uh, neatening up the uh, the edges here. <laughs> I 
I'm thinking of making it my own seal of physis, so let's have a little like almost like raptor ridge there, like that, like you get in like Jurassic Park. It almost looks like um, those sweets you get in the UK called, f um, what are they called, like fruit salad or something. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of at the moment, colour-wise. Nice little chicken arms. Uh, yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited for Pacific Rim Uprising. I mean, I haven't uh, watched any of the latest trailers or anything. I, I only watched like the first two trailers, I think. Um, and then, yeah, I just sort of don't really want to know anything about it. Um, I'm expecting it to be... Oh, crap. Didn't mean to do that. I'm expecting it to be not as good as the original, if I'm honest. Um, just because I think the novelty might have been gone, but I'll, it'd be interesting to see what they've done with the world building and how they're gonna how they progress it further. You know, so let's. Uh... The reason I sound so critical is because I know like Guillermo del Toro's only producing. I don't think he's. He's not directing. Um, so, like, already it's going to have some of his touch gone. Um, but who knows? I mean, it could be really, really kick ass. Um, he is hoping. Is the Coelophysis is going to have feathers? Uh, probably not. Or maybe I'll add some very... Uh, a small amount of feathers. But, um, I'll probably keep, keep these guys, for the most part, scaly. Because Coelophysis was a Triassic era dinosaur, so like having jungles like this, it wouldn't have existed in jungles like this. Is uh, is the the truth of it, unfortunately? But um, well, as far as I I'm aware, I mean I could be wrong, but um, from what I understand, from walking with dinosaurs, they they didn't live in uh, in jungles. They lived more uh, in arid sort of areas of the world. Might make his bottom jaw a lot thinner. Yeah, get it like this. So 
As long as giant robots and monsters beat the crap out of each other, I'm satisfied, says Small Farms. Yeah. I've seen some, like, clips that the uh, official Twitter and stuff are posting of, like, the new Jaegers, and, like, they look they look pretty damn cool. I like the one with the uh, the whip. <laughs> I mean, there's, like, a Jaeger with a uh, giant whip. My phone's exploding at the moment. What's going on? <laughs> My friend Tim just sent me a, a quote by... Uh, Robin Williams. Just letting him know I'm currently live streaming. <laughs> happy little dinosaur. Oh yeah, no, it won't it won't look happy in a minute. I'm gonna get it all looking uh more angry. Well, the thing is, like, at the end of this month, we've not only got um, Pacific Rim Uprising coming out, but there's also Ready Player One. In the UK, I, I'm, I can go watch Ready Player One and Pacific Rim Uprising within the same week. Um, so I was debating on going on the same day and having a double bill. But then I don't know if that might be, like, too much, like, overload of nerd, like, <laughs> nerdish stuff. Um, so I figured I might I might break up and go see one on one day and one on an, on another because I don't want to be like too exhausted with um you know geeky uh, geeky entertainment because I've heard Ready Player One has a lot of uh, a lot of references in it and uh, yeah I don't want to get like too too spoiled in a way. Make this leg a little bit um, less froggy. Okay, so, even though he's not directing, Guillermo del Toro is at least writing and producing it along with that girl who's writing Jurassic World 3, so still I said Jack should, oh, <laughs> you think I should write a Jurassic Park film? Well, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, that would be, that would be uh, an honour, but we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I do want to be a scriptwriter. That is, that is one of my uh, things. But I want to. I've got like my own stories to tell. Uh, you know, not all, not all about Jurassic. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Emily Carmichael. I'm really excited to see what she brings to the to the table in terms of Jurassic. I'm still iffy on Ready Player One, says British Tyrannosaur. I've already seen where the story goes and it's too referential for my taste. Hmm. I'm just like, I'm one of those people and I'm sure 
there are millions out there like myself but i'm like if if you could go back in time and say to my eight-year-old self by the way you're going to watch a film that has you know the t-rex from jurassic park in it king kong the delorean from back to the future among loads of other films and stuff that you you love it would have blown my little mind and so it, it kind of does even though i've seen this like imagery and stuff like a lot since like playing things like kingdom hearts and uh, and watching things like the avengers and all that sort of stuff where they you know ensemble pieces where they bring lots of characters together um i'm still amazed that like ready player one is is surprising me like i'm surprised that it's surprising me um because i haven't read the book so i haven't i don't really know what to expect for the most part so i might redraw this guy's art hand once uh once i've got the rest of it um sorted Um, 79. Okay, so it's coming along at a steady pace at the moment, this little dinosaur. He's, uh, Coming along. Got quite a while to be finished as yet, and then I'll do, uh, I'll add more of his comrades and stuff later. Um, I'll probably only focus on doing this, not not finishing this guy tonight, but um, definitely, uh, there you go, that's that's what his hand should look like. That's the right, that's the right angle right there, look. Let's just add on claws. And now what I'm going to do is uh, take out take out the color in its underside. So again, I mean, I did this a minute ago, but this is just so I can see where is the angle of his body, like the fr the 3D-ness in a way of uh, this little dinosaur. Do it like that, yeah. What are you guys saying? Uh, yeah, the uh, Cyclops from the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad is uh, is seen in Ready Player One trailer. I mean, Spielberg is a fan of the Ray Harryhausen movies. I've actually, uh, again, I've got that right here. I've got the Sinbad collection. So you've got the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad is on here. Yeah, top one. Yeah, I mean, there's a few few Ray Harryhausen films I've still yet to get, actually. Oh, too big.
and then I'm just going to darken the underside. And then use the light to lighten the top and then I'll add in a crucial little detail. Yeah, the meme movie. Ready Player One is nostalgia, the movie for my eyes, says Master Builder. Well, that's the thing is, it's like only Spielberg. Like, I was talking to this about my friend, with one of my friends the other day. We were talking about Ready Player One, and I was saying only Spielberg has the power to pull together all of those, you know, intellectual properties into one place like into one movie and you know the the amount of cost that they must have paid for to like have all these characters in one movie uh, must be ridiculous let's get him let's give him a nice uh, purple mouth Corvo at AZ says, we need Dino Defenders now. Well, dude, it's going to take a while to, to get that out. <laughs> um, what I'll do is once I've, you know, finished painting this bit, my next live streams, my next painting live streams will be uh, primarily uh, painting for Dino Defenders. So you guys can literally watch the process of me making it if you want. I can spend a good... Uh, I mean, it will kill two birds with one stone in a way, but you'll you might get spoilers for the story um, if you're watching me. So it's up to you. Would you want the story spoiled? Would you want to watch the whole process of uh, of me making Dino Defenders, or would you rather I work on it in secret and then you get to see it all in all in its glory once it's out? I would watch it, says Emerald Swords. Okay, now if you look, the jaw looks kind of uh, funky because it looks like it's kind of bent. So let me get the warp tool. And then this one I can... I can actually sort of... Ah, why is it not working? There you go. Get it straightened out a little bit. I'm using the sharpen tool now to sharpen this guy's features. Um. I'm just going to round the eye a little bit more and use a bright red to highlight areas of its face. Give it this kind of uh, almost glow down its body. Just a fraction of it would do. Yeah. The neck is too skinny to support that head. Oh yeah, no, don't worry. Like the proportions are all off. Like I haven't done the feet, I haven't done the hands. Um the head is meant to be a little bit closer to to the you know, where the camera is, I guess if you want to call it that. 
Um, the thing with my, like, the way I draw dinosaurs is I always, like, just do it really fast and crude like this to begin with. And then I'll go back through and make sure that it all uh, syncs up. But as long as I've got the lighting right, that's the main thing. Corvo AZ, I'm using the sharpening tool to sharpen this guy's features. Would you say that, that tool is cutting edge? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well I've lasted longer in this stream than I thought I was going to. I thought the pizza would be really uh, playing on my mind, but I've actually uh, lasted a little bit longer than I thought. But, you know, for the moment I think... Right, let's give him an eye. Let's give him a nice big sort of lime green eye. Oop. Now I want him to be like screaming out with like an almost like cold, dead reptilian look to his eye. So. Yeah, like that. And then add in uh, just dark. Oh, didn't need to see that. Just like dark lines down the side. Like this. And then uh, add in the gleam of light from the canopy. And then use the sharpening tool, the cutting edge tool to uh, get it all like that. Okay, not bad, not bad so far. Um, Let's merge these. Now I'm agreeing with you on that on the uh, the old head. So I think maybe if I twist the head around, okay, uh, copy that. Move. I'm going to actually rotate the neck more. I want it to be like, yeah, arching up like this. And then I'll widen it. And then I will warp it again. Sorry, I'm, I know I'm just like describing what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know how, I actually don't know how interesting that would be to someone who, who's like, okay, he's literally just describing what he's doing. But I mean, these sort of streams are completely different to, uh, you know, doing a video game. A video game, it kind of explains, you know, it gives you something to talk about because you can talk about what's happening in the game. But where with this painting, it's like, I, I feel like I might bore people if I'm just explaining my pro the process and then I'm doing this and then I'm doing that. Get a little bit of a titanium white. White. And then I might just do that and then get this first layer.
It's almost reminded me of the uh, the little character from um, Mulan. You know, the little uh, dragon that she befriends. <laughs> oh god, I moved the whole background. I need the head. There we go. And then rub that bit out. Yeah, I like that. Blend it that way. Okay, so it's looking looking a little bit better now. Bob Ross Rex, yeah. Um, let me get a dark, dark red, and then I can add in loads of little detail. So I want to add in the tongue, add in the bits of skin. Get all those little details in, like the shading around the jawline, the folds in the skin. The shape of the skull. The neck and head look perfect. If you imagine it standing, it's really fat. Yeah, I mean, it's just this section here. So if I like move, so if I use this finger tool, I can kind of add the bumps in. I was going to add in like, you know, the spinal things and then have it come around like that sort of thing and then you have the throat meet back up with the head a little bit of an angle like this and it might actually you know make its back arch more Okay. And then get the bits under the eye. And then get some of the muscles under the, the old leg. So it's a little bit like a chubby little um, <laughs> coelophysis. <laughs> The legs are frog legs. Yeah. <laughs> Use the uh, gene sequence filled it with frogs. 
Yeah, it needs to be more. Uh, I'd say the leg needs to be more. Let's see if I can do this. It needs to be more like facing this way. It's okay, yeah. If I am um, cut out the entire leg and flip it, I might get a better result. There you go. Oh no, I clicked, oh for God's sake, I clicked not apply. Again, I'll, I'll splay the, I'll splay the toes out and stuff um, better in a minute. Get the tail. Enough. Wait. Yeah, it looks a lot better now. <laughs> How does the emoji movie fit into the Jurassic Park canon? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I think I need to redo it. Toes, but like do them. I want to kind of give it like kind of hideously long feet. Okay, so I think I'm getting a bit hungry and uh, my mind is wandering <laughs> onto food. Um, so I might just finish up this little guy's toes and then call this stream, call it a night on this stream um, and come back to it uh, in the near future. Um, just want to make sure that I'll add like plants and stuff in the way as well, so I don't have to. You know, you you won't see all the all the detail of that. Um, actually, go like. It's kind of ripped. Look at my tiny little Coelophysis pigs. Maybe the arm needs to be shorter. Let's have a look. Yeah, okay, so Almost done. So, hello, hello, Dr. Aaron Cooler. <laughs> Welcome.
Is the dino going to stay pink? No, I, I want to make it more red. Um, let me see if I can do that now. Uh, vibrance. Not that red though. Like, <laughs> that's a red dinosaur. Um, You kind of get the idea, that's the sort of thing I'm going for, it's like the, a really, um, overtly colourful dinosaur against a, uh, black background, or a blue background, sorry. Scrumptious show, dude, thanks again, respect, says Scott Stivers. Hey, no worries. I like its colours. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be going in a second. Not, not just yet. I'm just uh, wanna do a couple of more, a couple of more little adjustments to this guy. I want the light to be bouncing off uh, certain areas of this little fella. dark in certain other areas so try and get it to look as real as possible in a way for, for what it's worth might have darkened his mouth just a little bit too much there. Um let's see. Alright. Wrong one. He's still streaming again at midnight. Uh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see about it. Um Might play the Jurassic World pinball game again. See what this looks like. Oop. Oop. Oh my word. Um, and then let me, okay, before, before I go, <laughs> I'm just going to define this, uh, the T for this little dinosaur, get them really, uh, shining, because they are facing the light, so they would be, uh, Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do for tonight. Um, 
because then I'll I'll eventually get round to like blending him with the background a little bit. Um, so then he won't stand out as much. But for the moment, he'll be his opacity is at a hundred percent. Should be. Come on. There we go. And uh, let me click save. I haven't even added a shadow or anything yet, but there you go. That's what I think I'm going to do for tonight. Uh, don't know how many of the original guys are still around. The Imperial Diamond Spinosaurus is high, Jack. Just watch. I watch your old channel. Ah, no, yeah, you should be. Uh, you should definitely stay. Stay with this channel. <laughs> this is where it's at. My old one, I'm not going to post on anymore. It's dead. Um, will you ever do another Jurassic Park collection video? Do you know what? I think I might, but like the thing is, I actually cut my uh, like after the when I did the third Jurassic Park collection video, I took a look. I I had it uploaded, and then I was like, do you know what? I um most of this stuff I don't have any sentimental value to. So then I sold it all. Um, and then I took down that video because I felt like it was almost lying to people because that's that's not exactly what I owned. Um, let's just uh, view this uh, little screen. Yeah. Um, but no, what was I saying? So yeah, I've hold half, sold half my stuff. So now I've like got a very different collection than what I had before. Um, and obviously, since working with Universal on a couple of things, some of the stuff in my collection is things that I've created for them. So it's like the collection is different to how it was. It's a different beast. Um, but like I did a video the other day on this channel where I oh, unboxed this bad boy, the Canyon T-Rex from Jurassic Park 3, which uh, I still haven't taken out of the box. Um, but yeah. Ah, <laughs> um, there's already a video on that. So, and I don't know how long I'm going to keep a hold of that for before I pass it on to someone else. Um, I don't know, but we'll we'll see. But yeah, Jurassic Park fan says awesome painting. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, not finished yet. I've got to add some more uh, some more exciting things. I've got to finish this little guy off. And still add some more detail to the vines at the top here and uh, and continue on but as you can see this is what the 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 painting looked like at the beginning of the stream uh, two hours and 45 minutes ago and this is what it looks like now so after two hours 45 minutes this is uh what you get actually just just before i go i'll just very very quickly add um uh i'll take out the light so I'll, I'll take out half this blue so you'll see what I mean there you go so like there you go so then it adds a little bit more um depth in a way or maybe maybe i won't do that now maybe i'll do that uh another time but maybe that that first bit there yeah that's that's what we're talking about okay there we go let me save that and then i'll come back to the next time so there you go extremely awesome stuff says clayton thank you very much um all right guys uh thank you for watching the stream and uh i really hope you've enjoyed this and look forward to i, I might be coming back in a couple of hours to stream uh, later on tonight i'll either play the jurassic world pinball game i'll either i'll look at the aisle i'll see if i can get that but i don't know if i will um but i'll have i'll have a look see see if it's uh something i want to buy um uh or it'll be overwatch which it might be or if I feel up for it, I'll come back and paint a little bit more to this. I don't know. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the stream and I'll catch you on the flip. Thank you so much for staying around. And yeah, small farms, dinos for life. Uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around, guys. And I'll catch you later. Bye bye.